Hi, Lead Group readers. Uh, I'm Stephen Lee, coming to today with uh, basically an update on our thoughts on precious metals. I think everybody by now knows that gold has broken out pretty decisively to new highs. We'll take a little bit of a bow, but we think we can save a bigger bow for later on because, believe it or not, gold is probably still on the tarmac. Unfortunately, as we look ahead in this decade, we really don't see anything that will stop the bull market in gold. There will be corrections, maybe severe corrections, but we have no upside target right now for gold. We just think it's in a uh, dynamic bull market and will continue to rise. Second, mess second part of our message today, and maybe even as important or more important than the first part, is to tell you not to ignore gold's sister metal. Silver, and for that matter, platinum too, but silver really is becoming special. And we think that silver is very close to that so-called point of inflection in which it really does start to take off. Unlike gold, silver has a lot of industrial applications. That's good and bad. It's good because when those industrial applications are growing, it means extra demand for silver in addition to the demand for it as a precious metal. Bad because it means silver can be more uh, sensitive to economic downturns and we saw that in 2008. But there's something else about silver uh, and indeed about almost all these precious metals. They're not just precious because they look beautiful, because they are beautiful. Uh, in the case of silver, and also platinum, they're precious because they have very, very rare qualities. Silver in particular is the best thermal conductor in the world. There's, we, we have not created a better thermal conductor, there's no other thermal conductor in nature that is better than silver. Same when it comes to electrical conductivity. Silver is the king, better than copper even. We don't use silver in uh, transmission lines because it's just too expensive. But there are certain applications where we can't do without it. If you're typing, if you have a keyboard in front of you, a computer keyboard, almost surely there's silver in it. If you have a, a, a personal data assistant, like this iPhone that I'm showing you, there's probably silver in that. The best batteries come from silver. But there's another application. Well, let me, let me just say this before I get done. Uh, industrial applications for silver account for about 50% of the silver that is used in the world today. The other 50% go into cooking ware, silverware, uh, coins, uh, photography, etc. But 50% is real industrial demand. And that's been growing at about 4 or 5% a year over the last six years. It slowed down in 2008. But what we see right now and we don't think it's on anybody's mind, it's not really being discussed, is the role silver plays in solar energy. Solar energy is growing by leaps and bounds, but it's still minuscule, a very small fraction of 1% of uh, how much energy we produce in the world. I mean, really small fraction, maybe a hundredth of 1% of uh, how much energy they produce in China, per se, per, uh, as an example. And China is the largest producer of solar energy. So there's massive room for this market for solar energy to continue to grow, and we think it will continue to grow at an accelerated pace. But there's a catch, because you cannot create solar energy without using silver. There's just no next door, no across the street from silver, no real substitutes. You need silver when you create solar energy. And in fact, you need quite a bit of it. The general ratio is about, for every gig, uh, a gigawatt of solar energy, you need about 80 tons of silver. If you're gonna produce 50 gigawatts of uh, solar energy, that would mean 400 tons of silver, which is about uh, 400, uh, about 20% or so of what the world produces. That's a huge number. And it's a number we're likely to get to in the not too distant future. We're going to have a large problem accommodating the world's need for solar energy. Because silver may be more scarce, more scarce in relative to how much we're using than let's say oil. 
The U.S. Geographical Survey estimates that there is 200,000 tons of silver in the earth that is economically viable to mine. We use about 20,000 tons a year, one-tenth of what's there. Now, we recycle some of it, et cetera. But still, if you look at the ratio of how much we use to how much is there, no metal is scarcer than silver. And the demand for no metal that I can think of right now is growing faster, or could be growing faster, than the demand for silver. Add that up with the precious element that you get with silver, because after all, historically, silver and gold track each other because they're both precious metals. You add that up, and you have an incredibly bullish case for silver. Now, I'm not grandstanding. Believe me, I'm not. I made you know predictions. I could be wrong on this one. I did predict a hundred dollar oil when oil well, when I started writing the book. Oil was probably about twenty dollars. When I started writing defying the market, oil was ten dollars. And I both cases predicted dramatically higher prices for oil. In the 2004 book that was published in 2004, that is the oil factor. I predicted a hundred dollar oil and higher prices. I still believe that. I also believe silver, which is now trading somewhere in the high teens, could easily, easily reach a hundred dollars in the next three, four, five years, not too long a time period, and probably go much higher than that. This message is really just to alert you to another incredible investment opportunity and to say to you, uh, if you take one of those silver coins and put it under your uh, pillow at night, you can go to bed feeling very, very comfortable. Because if you do this over the next five years, instead of uh, it's, you, you could see almost by magic a coin worth sixteen, seventeen dollars be worth a hundred dollars or more. Have a very good night's sleep. I think you'll sleep better with a silver coin under your pillow. Enjoy. Thank you very much.